Hey guys, it's Zacho X. Um, this video I had to make because I got an uh, email in my message in, in my inbox, excuse me, and it's about a game called Memory. Um, if you remember about turning cards over, and if one card picture equals another card picture, then supposedly you've got those solved, and you have to move on to the other cards. Um, we're gonna do this with buttons and image controls. Now. Uh, supposedly, and I find this really funny, the person asking couldn't even get help from the teacher. So I'm going to solve this, <laughs> I actually solved this so fast, and I made the program in an hour and 30 minutes, well written and everything. I'm just thinking, what is this teacher teaching, what's going on, I don't know. <laughs> but I, f I find it actually quite funny if maybe he really is teaching programming with Visual Basics. He should kind of know this stuff, I don't know. Maybe maybe the maybe the teacher really does know or something. Who knows? <laughs> Still find it funny. But anyways, um, I did promise that we're going to be going over the wind suck uh, control, and that's going to be very soon. I just haven't had any time yet, and since I got this in my inbox, I decided, well, I better help this person out because I already know how to do this, and I felt, well, I'll just go ahead and make a video. Um, so this is going to be a review over some of the stuff I've done before. Um, I call this the Christmas memory game, um, basically because it is Christmas this month, and well, why not? You know, jolly green giant, yeah, jingle bells, Batman's mills, <laughs> yeah, all those different songs. But um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show this game. So we got our form memory game, and I call it Christmas memory game. I have a button. Uh, it's called button choice with an index of zero. It means it's a control array. I also have another button, image picture with a control array of zero. Now what happens is I could have put all eight buttons here and all eight image controls here, but I don't like to have um, a button on top of an image like this because you can't really see what the programmer did. So instead I'm going to write code that copies this control array zero and it'll make a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it'll be one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the zero one is always vi invisible because it's just being copied. Um, same for this one. Excuse me, it wasn't supposed to do that yet. Um, same for this one. Uh, so we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So go ahead and look at the code. Um, right click, do code. <clears throat> Let's go up to the top here, and we're going to start with the form load first, and then I'll explain the variables, because when I start programming, I always think about the form load first, and if I get stuck at a position where I need a variable, then I write the variable. Um, so when I was thinking about the form load, I need to have those buttons set up. So I declared an index, or excuse me, an integer to loop with, so int next number. Um, go load eight buttons and eight image boxes. So I say for one to eight, so eight cycles. Please load the first one, second, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then do the same for the picture. And then I call procedure move controls. So it's actually taking this whole control array, I am pictures, and importing it in this procedure which I used a parameter called object. This is very interesting. So as we go down, because I haven't really explained this, here's my procedure. Now you see it says move controls, object control as object. If you remember, I talked about um, passing a control array, it has to be as object. So what you see here is object control, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's getting passed is only the control array. So as it's passed, they all moved these um, positions. I use the dot move function, or I think it's method actually. Excuse me, method. And it moves to the left and the top, so eight and eight. Now how do I get these numbers? I close this and open up the form. Simply, when you move a button to a position, there's a number up here at the top and it says 168 and 8. Left position is 168, top is 8, and so forth. If I move it again, I get next position, 
and so forth. So put that back down, close this, and view code. So instead of writing for both of them, I just decided to write a procedure and just call it twice. Save some code, remember? That's why we write sub procedures. So make all buttons visible um, from 1 to 8. Okay, then make them all visible. So now we've got everything positioned. Let's start getting our random numbers. So we set the random generator called randomize. Now, if you don't remember how to get random numbers, you need to watch that video. <coughs> so the first thing we're going to do is use a temporary variable. Random number, 1 from eight, one to 8 as an array, but it's going to be integer. Now, prefix is A-I-N-T for array, integer, random number. I call a procedure here, get random numbers, and I use the array that I created right above. The reason I do this is because there's a lot of code in this procedure, get random numbers. And I don't need a lot of code in the form load. I should just be calling sub procedures. It's easy to track, easy to see what's happening. I'm just calling this procedure. I don't need to see a lot of code right here. So I just remember, oh, get random numbers. Go to that procedure. It's very professional. That's the way professionals do it. So I go down. <laughs> and yes, I am saying I'm a professional. So, <laughs> All right, so see here, we're passing. Um, and the same variable name it doesn't have to be but it just is <laughs> makes it easier to remember and it's an array see how it's got it's open parentheses but so here's explaining it we have the first one is equal to pick a random number one through eight okay then the next one what I did here is very smart very bright um, I start a loop because if we pick a number 1 through 8, we don't want to pick the same number. So with the loop, I say do until the number does not equal the previous number. But it won't just start because of that. You have to have a reason. So I put, and if you remember, um, when you declare an integer it starts out equal to zero so I say and does not equal zero so automatically makes this loop go off it's very brilliant so as the loop goes off it's trying to pick a different number than the previous one so here we could get one this one will not get one because what will happen is if it gets one it loops again and says we can't have one okay we get one okay loop again loop again loop again oh we got two finally We've got two. And the same thing goes down here. It's the same um, process, except we add one extra statement every time, and that will be the previous one. So we have copy, paste, and then we add another statement for an extra previous one. So all these ch make sure as we go down that if we pick one here, two here, three here, then four here, um, they do not match so you can have all random numbers now if we get a one here this is checking all the ones above if it's equal to one of those then keep looping until you get something different <clears throat> I guess that's the best way to explain that now there is a different way to get around one through random eight numbers and make sure they're all different um, that's getting random numbers like if I say let's say I pick a random number one through eight and I get four well then just get a random number one through three and one and five through eight. But the problem with that is what if you get a random number like seven? Well, how do you get a random number through eight? If you can only pick eight. Let's see? So it's not really random. Um so this way it is because if we get seven, it will just keep randomly going through the one and eight. Even though it gets seven and has to keep going over and over again it will for sure be random. Um, a lot of people do it this way and yes it does take more time sometimes to get those random numbers but it is actually random. Um, I want people to understand that so alright so we got the random eight numbers then we check each one so from one to eight all the random numbers we want to check 
if it if the first one equals one or two, then it's a Santa. Three or four, then it's gifts. Then if it's five or six, it's Rudolph. Then it's seven or eight, it's a Christmas tree. <clears throat> now this really doesn't matter. You could put one or two equals gifts, but then you need to put gifts here, and you need to put the tag equals gifts. So basically, I thought in my head, well, I'll just say one and two equals Santa. That's how you have to think about it. So the first picture uh, spot could be, or the first random number, excuse me, could be one. If it is in that first spot picture, index of one, because see, look, remember, take this. It's equal to one first, so it passes here. This is going to be one, this is going to be one, and this is going to be one. And this could be one, and so forth all the way down. Then when we get to, and we'll pass here's two, and two, and two. But because it's six case on what random number it is, not all these cases are going to go off. It's just going to go off of whatever number it is. So it's going to generate the right picture. I use a load picture statement on the property dot picture. So it loads from directory, the closest one, which is the same folder, and then the picture. And then to keep this tracked, I take the image control dot tag and just give it a name. The reason being, we don't have to add a lot of extra code. We're just checking the tags when we play this game. So go down. All right. Now comes the clicking of the button. So we need a variable to see when we first click. So I knew that couldn't be saved. Um, actually, we could have done static with this, but I did this way. And it's very professional anyway, so let's go up. I don't know if I talked about how long it took me to take to make this, but an hour and 30 minutes is pretty damn fast for having to think real organized making this. Um, 